everybody. Today we are making a video on the road and I have my husband Jorge here Hello. with me. Uh, we, we were on a road and I was thinking to, I always think about what kind of videos I should make um, for our YouTube channel and often it's about spousal sponsorship because we, we do a lot of those and I was thinking well me and Jorge submitted our application last year and it was quite the journey and I figured we could have a conversation here uh, live um, to discuss kind of what we did, what were the positive things about it, what were the negative things about it and uh, baby is waking up in the back so we'll see how long we can do this for. So Jorge if I start with you um, what would you say was the biggest challenge in preparing the application, knowing that I am an immigration lawyer and I've been doing this for a very long time and I'm very knowledgeable, but yet we still had some difficulties? Yes, the, the whole application can be very daunting. Uh, there's a lot of steps, there's a lot of uh, paperwork that you have to fill out, there's a lot of proof, there's a lot of pictures, documents. Uh, I think that's the hardest part of it is gathering all that information and compiling it and make sure it makes sense for the immigration for the officer make sure that it's something that they can use to make a decision right uh, yeah I mean I would say for me for example a difficult part was I wanted to put excerpts of our whatsapp conversations yeah. and you know there's First of all, it's on my phone, and I think you you helped me with that. I was like, "How are we gonna print this? Uh, how is it gonna come out? Come out?" And I think we had to redo it twice because there was an issue. Um, and you know, it's something. Well, you had to choose too, right? What's actually yes. uh, what is actually gonna be beneficial for you? Yes, and going, you know, we had. We, we were together for like a year at that point, a bit more, so we had like, I don't know how many hundreds of pages of WhatsApp conversations and... Um, I think it was 110. That we included or that was... No, total? In, in, in total. Total. So, you know, just, it sounds kind of simple, like, okay, provide the chat conversations, but then it takes, I don't know, it probably took like two days of like, a total of an hour, you know, an hour on each day to like print, organize, made a, made a mistake, reprint it. Oh, we're out of paper, go get paper. And it's these small administrative thing, tasks that can end up taking a long time. Um, one other thing that I remember was trying to get your Cuban police certificate. Oh, well, yeah, that was the whole thing in itself. So we didn't, we weren't able to submit with the file. Um, because well the embassy wasn't very helpful uh, we went to the Cuban embassy we went to the Cuban embassy to gather the documentation from them and uh, long story short they felt like they that I should contact somebody in Cuba to get it done over there I mean that's what the embassy is for right they're supposed to help the citizens but not this one so we end up having to ask a friend of a friend had a, a friend in Cuba that was actually able to get it, but I had to pay them, and it's an ordeal, but I think that day we got it done. Yeah, we got it. We don't have the original yet. We submitted the copy and the translation, and hoping they don't ask for the original. Is the original coming? It's coming by mail, by snail mail. <laughs> From Cuba? Yes. <laughs> snail mail? Snail mail. For real? That's a problem, huh? but uh, okay. Slow. Yeah, very slow. It might never come here. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was like a lot of many months of, you know, back and, you know, discussing it. Oh, what about the clearance? Oh, let me email the embassy. And Yeah, they even offered to drag like an email saying that uh, they were taking too long or whatever. But at the end, the immigration needs it or wants it, they, they need it. Yeah, and it could really delay things because I was thinking, I know what's going to happen. They're going to send a letter saying, okay, we need your police clearance now. You have 30 days. 
and we're gonna have to request an extension of time that's not so much the problem asking for an extension of time it's just you know you want to become a permanent resident already right yeah, so exactly. why get delayed and it's you don't have a criminal record and on top of it you so you needed the clearance because you were in Cuba it's past 18 but you were in right. Cuba from uh, until like 19. until 19 yeah so I left Cuba when I, when I was 19 years old yeah. so even though it's been a long time they still needed it because I lived yeah. there as an adult yes yeah. yeah, and I remember the embassy told you, oh, the, your request is going by diplomatic suitcase or diplomatic plane to Cuba. Uh, yeah, briefcase or something like that. And, and it's coming uh, back with a. It, it never made it. And I remember throughout the process, I was like, why can't they just email someone there who's just gonna send an email back that says you don't have a record? That's not how the cure it's works. It's like one second. But, that's uh, not how it works. That's not how a lot of places work. No. So that was that was something. Um, then what else? We had to. I mean, utility bills, internet, hydro. It was just like a printing. We had to print. Yeah. Uh, reference letters. We got. We're very lucky. We have very good friends. They yeah. wrote letters for us. Um, we got in photos. That, that took a while because we had so many photos, we did have a lot of photos. and we had so many big moments um, since we met each other, you know, traveling, we got engaged, um, I got pregnant, we had a baby, um, after we filed the initial application, so we had to send yeah. an update and, you know, organizing the pictures, printing them in color, going to Staples, writing date and description, that, that took a while too, I remember yeah. we did that for a few hours. Um, then of course there's the forms, which you know they can be tricky. They can be tricky, and I know forms. I I see forms all day, every day. I can review forms very quickly. My eyes know exactly what has to be, and probably this was like one of the most challenging forms for me because it's my file, but also. I was questioning myself a lot because there's some questions that just did not make any sense. And I was like, how, how come I've never seen this issue before? Because um, you've been divorced twice before. Yes. <laughs> and, and there was a form, there was something about a question about a date of separation and a date of divorce. And then there was a question about how long is the relationship? And it was right. confusing because, okay, does the relationship end when you break up or does the relationship end when you divorce? And sure. the question was not clear to me. And maybe with other clients, I never really, I think some clients put date of separation and some clients put date of divorce and no officer has never said anything. But because it's our file, I wanted, I really asked myself the question. And I think I talked to a few lawyer colleagues of mine and I answered, uh, intuitively, which is when you break up, because that's when the relationship ends. The yeah, relationship that's what makes sense. The, other, right. the, the actual divorce is just more of a legal standpoint. Yeah. It's not the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the forms, there was a lot of times we put little post-its and uh, we were waiting, you know, to get information. Um, what else was there? Uh, joint purchases. Uh, we had... Yeah. What else did we have? Joint purchases, um, utility bills, yeah. uh, pictures, the travel I, when we travel. Oh together. yeah, we had to remember the travel dates. Google is really good with that. That was uh, he got me into all the Google stuff. So Google Maps tracks. Yeah, it kind of tells you where you've been, the timeline. So yeah. when this type of situation is very handy to know where you went yeah. years ago. And, and tribal itineraries, we printed out our flight confirmations. Uh, I mean, those are in your emails, but you know, you have to retrieve them, print them out. Um, yeah, that's something challenging for a lot of my clients, like dates, especially if you travel a lot. Yeah. You're supposed to remember some of the forms, you know, ask you five years before, ten years before. Uh, oh yeah, you had to contact your parents a few times because you had to know when you first went to Cuba. You yeah. had to... When, when we left. Yes. When we, went, when we went from Cuba to the 
States. And there was a... I mean, obviously there was your parents' address in the U.S. There was their complete names. Yeah. Um, and there was, yeah, I remember there was a lot of little details. You had to call your parents and be like, yeah. what is this information? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we're both professionals and it was challenging. It was challenging and it was during the pandemic on top of it. Um, and I was pregnant. Um, so, you know, this video is basically to say, kind of make you feel better if you're going through the process that if you're doing it yourself, give yourself, you know, time and be patient and take it step by step. And, uh, yeah, a lot of patience, I would say. And if you yeah, have... Yeah, just patience and double check stuff and make sure, take your time, I guess. Yeah. And I think what we did a few times is I would prepare it, we would prepare it, and then I would say, like, okay, let me review it one more time, right. like the next day. And I had... Uh, a clear mind. With a clear mind, because then that's when you see things and have someone else review it. Like, if you don't have a lawyer, you don't necessarily have to have a lawyer, give it to a friend or give it to a family member who can, like, spell check and be like, hey, if you know, read this, do you see anything off and do you think I'm missing something? Um, I had a few of my lawyer colleagues review and... Surprisingly, they found a lot of little things just to make it that perfect, you know. Um, and I learned actually a lot through the process myself because, you know, different lawyers uh, have different uh, visions. Yeah. yeah. And um, and you have been through this process before, you yep. immigration paperwork and stuff. So you're kind of used to it. But again, I mean, would you say that it was kind of stressful? Yeah. yeah. Oops. Yeah, immigration is always stressful. Yeah. Uh, because you're dealing with you know, your future and uh, work permit and uh, where you're going to establish yourself. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very stressful. Yeah. Because we did, um, we were initially going to file an overseas application. Um, and we were, you know, going to travel back and forth. Jorge is American. But the, with the pandemic, um, we decided to do an inland because. Because you had a closed work permit. Yes, I had a, originally I had a closed work permit, and uh, I wanted an open work permit. And uh, what was the reason? So, so when you moved here, you got a job offer, and you got a closed work permit. Yes, I was lucky enough to get a job offer as soon as I moved, and they were. All, I was also lucky enough for them to be able to do the closed work permit for me, because not every place wants to do the paperwork, deal with it. Employer has to pay for it, mm -hmm. so I was lucky enough that that happened, and I I eventually wanted to have the open work permit. Yeah, to be able to apply for different positions, opportunities, and the inland process offers that option. Yeah. Um, but it took some time. The problem was that before the pandemic, it was taking four to five months, but we applied within the pandemic and. It took eight months, which is not so bad, but... But, but it's the unknowing, right? It's yeah. not knowing when it's actually going to be happening. Yeah, and I remember when we got the email, you were so happy. Yes. I was very happy too. And uh, now we are, we did your biometrics, you did your medical. medical. How was the medical process? The medical was pretty good. It was easy. Uh, I just... There was a list of people, of, uh, places to go, and I chose the one that was closest to our house. I went. It was very. It was very simple. It wasn't very uh, complex or deep. It was just checking your ear or blood pressure or something like that. They do. They do do a blood test, uh, and then they tell you if there's something wrong. Whatever they're looking for specifically. Can you ask questions like, oh, my throat hurts, or it's not really about no, that? No, it's not really about that. It's uh, more of a one way. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's that way. It's yeah. Not, not, yeah, you're, you're not there to ask questions like that. Right. And, and there's such a demand that it's like a factory, right? You go and you sit and you do your thing and then out. Right. Next person, next person, you next felt person. people in the room or other people coming yeah. to do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people. And yeah. how, much, how much was it? Uh, I've heard it's four hundred, but no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that much. It was like two something. Pretty two, pricey. Two forty, yeah. Pricey. Uh, I think it also depends on where you do it. Okay. But most of them are around that price. Okay. And uh, then you did your biometric.
biometrics, it's pictures and fingerprints. Yeah, that was really easy too. I was lucky enough that there was one place that was like two minutes away from the house. Yes. And uh, schedule an appointment for the next day, no problem. Due to COVID, you know, the whole precaution thing, uh, you know, mask, uh, clean your hands, all the stuff. And that, I don't remember how much it was, but it was definitely uh, 85 dollars, yes. Yeah. And that was very simple. It took me about no more than 10 minutes in and out. And that was it. And uh, we are, because we're in Quebec, uh, we reside in Quebec, uh, we had to file a CSQ, which we did last week. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, the CSQ, is, it's, it's simple, but it's really not simple. It's simple for me because with my staff, we've reviewed those forms so many times so we could we know what to answer. Uh, we have examples, uh, but it's just, uh, I just find it's not user friendly. It's, the, not, it's not user friendly at all. Yeah. The questions are, uh, they're open, open in the, so yeah. the, you already really know exactly what they want. And I don't like how they have a question, let's say, uh, how long have you been living together? Yes or, or have you been living together? Yes or no. But then in the column on the left, it says there's like an explanation, like if you have lived together, but you da 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 da. Yeah, it's like more granular. Yeah. On the side than the actual question. Yeah. Skip yeah. to question, and then you're like, what? But I answered, so I, I I don't know why they do it like that. And the same questions come back multiple times. You have to send the same form twice. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole thing could actually just be if you just put on the website. Answer like yeah, they four should both questions. It. Yeah. It's like it's like it would take like three minutes, you know. But yeah. So now the next step for our file, I think, it's for you to be approved. I think so. And the biometrics are done. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything's done. Um, unless there's something I don't know about you that you haven't told me, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and. Uh, because of the pandemic, they've been usually when you get approved, you have to go to what's called a landing interview or appointment where they just kind of confirm your information if your case is straightforward and they say, Congratulations, you're a permanent resident, and they give you to sign your confirmation of permanent resident, and then a few months later, you get your permanent resident card in the mail. But with the pandemic, they are now just doing an email, which is it's, it's kind of like, Why haven't they done this all the time? You get an email that says, Congratulations, you are now a permanent resident of Canada. Your PR card will follow in the mail. Uh, or I think you have to apply for it, actually. Right. Uh, it's like another step with photos and stuff like that. But um, that's so easy. It, yeah. it, 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 you, for, you let go of all this bureaucratic steps of, you know, like you don't have to take off of your employment, go there, right. find parking, you know. But, I mean, it's a big event. It's nice, I think. Yeah, of course. You know, but uh, there's a lot of people becoming permanent residents all the time. But right? it's... Uh, one of the good things about the pandemic is, uh, is bringing all this stuff to light, modernizing, making everything more uh, accessible online, and yes. uh, speeding things up in that way, which I think is, is great. And you work in IT, so... Yes. I'm sure when you saw all of these processes, you were kind of like, oh, this is yeah, so... Yeah, it could be... It could be done a different way. Yes. It's government, it's bureaucratic, it's the way it is. Yes. Well, we are um, getting off of here, off here to do like a pit stop. Um, so yeah, I hope this was uh, helpful sharing a little bit of our process and filing our applications. And um, if you have any questions, you can always ask us in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.